obviously, uh, you, you've got to look at the background of, of uh, Japan and, and the religions, uh, and you've got Zen Buddhism was a big influence in, in Japan, uh, and so meditation and mind control were big aspects of, of their culture. Um, but also, coming from in India, you've got meditation there, and they would also use what we call mudras and hand positions. So what we've got is, at the end of our fingers, um, if, you, if you think of the body as a hologram, then the finger can be a whole of the body, or each finger could represent a different part of the body. So he says, this represents the head, this represents the intestines, and so each finger would have a different feeling. But also, coming down to the meridians and going back, uh, meridians that are coming down the, the arm and back up, and they exchange at the wrist. So at the end of each point here, you've got meridians that have different elements, positive and negative energies, and some are, have the qualities of metal, some have the qualities of air, some have the qualities of fire. And so when you join in these things together, you're making a couple of those elements inside the physiology of your body, which if you then couple with the mind, becomes a mind-controlled um, physiology of that element. So if you looked at the colour orange, for instance, say it was, I'm not sure of the exact figure, but it's about 500 cycles per second frequency. Now, if you wanted to produce 500 cycles per second frequency, it's very difficult to say to your brainwaves, let's do 5,000 cycles. But I'm looking at an orange lamp, and if I'm looking at that orange lamp, and I can close my eyes and visualise that orange lamp, then the visualisation is going at 500 cycles per second. So now I've produced orange. So if I now send that orange to my fingers, what projects my fingers, if I know it across the interface, I can project that into another person. So that, that is again another explanation of, of, of the power that healers are using, but sometimes they don't understand what they're doing. That doesn't mean to say it doesn't work. They've got some way of tapping in to the universal energies and harnessing them, and then being able to express them out. Now, when you, when you, when you measure healers, they're, they're measured, at, uh, the brain waves are at about 10 cycles per second uh, frequency, which is um, alpha waves. So you've got, below that is, is delta and, and uh, theta, which is deeper levels in sleep and, and deep somnambulistic uh, states. And higher up the scale, you, you've got the beta scale, where that's more cognitive thinking, more excitive, that, that kind of thing. But uh, meditation and other mind control techniques to take you to about 10 seconds. 10 cycles per second. Now when you're at that frequency, if you can project across the interface with another person, then you can give them healing of that same energy that brings out the wellness. Now one of the biggest things that Hatsumi said about healing was bring out the wellness of the person. Don't think you can cure the sick. You have skills and tools to bring out their wellness. So if something is, needs resuscitation, like an organ's been failing because it's malpositioned or it's injured, the resuscitation techniques um, actually bring that organ back to vitality, which then makes the person well. So you've got to be able to position your body around, your hands around the person's body. You've got to be able to feel through the skin because they didn't have biopsies in those days and, and, and those sort of things. So it was all done through feeling. So this, this feeling of projection. So if you wanted to uh, uh, fire something up, you would use the fire elements. If you wanted to cool something down, you could use the wind element. So you could get rid of inflammation by concentrating on that element and projecting it through the subo points and the, the Q-shoes. So that, that's how the mudra were used. Uh, and there's was, there was various ones, depending on which fingers you join together. Uh, so there we've got those fingers joined. And then if you join those fingers, it's the next element. Then if you join those fingers, it's the next element. Then you join those fingers, and it's the next element. And what you're doing then is earth, water, wind, and fire, and this would be void. So joining this would, would create a zero also of, of, of the void. And, and the void is, uh, is, is not empty. The void is very full. So when I asked Hatsumi about uh, meditation, he said, it's not about emptying your mind. It's about going into a space where the body is empty of the universe, but full of what's in the void. Now that was like a, 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 a sort of metaphor or a distraction or something that didn't really make sense. But what he's talking about is the, the, the precocious nature of, say, a horse. Won't let a wolf come within... 200 metres, and there it is just nibbling the grass. So it's, it's constantly aware of its surroundings while it's just grazing the grass. Now that's a precocious nature of being vigilant at rest. And that's, that's also zero. So if you're waiting for, say, the Saki test, you're vigilant, but at rest. 
I'm not thinking it might have come now, might have come now. You've got to empty your mind so that you're going to feel that difference, that fluctuation in the energies around you and the intent of the person. And that's the sake. And that's what a bird picks up way before an earthquake. You know, birds fly away way before earthquakes. So all of these things are in nature. And we need to reinvent our natural bodies. We need to go wild with our house movements and things and our tidyuts to understand those concepts. And that's what I've done for... It's, it's coming up 30, uh, it's 1986, it's, um, I forget the number of years, it's about 34, 5 now. Um, and, and still looking at his movements, still looking at the words he said, still interpreting them in different ways, still studying the anthropology, still studying the movements of the head, the body, how the mind works, how the brain interacts. So to me, I didn't study ninjutsu. I studied what he called the anatomy of Budo. And he said, because you already had the anatomy and you were trained in Budo, he could then teach you this feeling and these concepts through the anatomy because it's through the anatomy that his body floats and that's what people don't understand they think it's through technique uh, and you'll be very as he actually says way back in 1995 you could train for many 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 years and be very skilled Boudicca but you wouldn't have his skill because that was beyond and he also commented the same on, on Shiatsu if you, you did Shiatsu for many 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 years but only pressing you could be a very good doctor but with this feeling, it would be beyond the shiatsu. And that's what he's meaning. And you've got to be able to put that in your daily life. I've been fortunate. I've put it into a manual therapy where it fit. And I put it into martial arts where it came from. And that's why the medicine and the, the budo are, are one. It's the one technique overrides them both. It's not that that is a prerequisite for that. It's this is in both. And that's the important thing. And by understanding all of that garon, you know, went to harness energy, you know, went to, to, to resuscitate something. So that feeling has to be from your heart. You know, it has to be pure. What comes in, you vibrate, you feel, you can express out. If you've got other emotions going on, then that can mar it. So you've, you, you've got to really understand how to go to this motion, which is not switched off. It's switched on at rest. <laughs>